Victor, this next guest is very special to me. You know, former co-worker at NFL.com. We go way back. And he just told me a great story about the airport, too. You know, I saw him at uh, Levi Stadium for that Monday night football game between the Rams and the 49ers. Of course, I'm talking about Tyler Dragon, NFL reporter of USA Today. Tyler, I felt like that story was so great. You have to say here on the po podcast. First of all, welcome to House of Horns. You were a compass on the beat, and now you're here. I appreciate your time as always. But Tyler, how did you make it to, to the to the flight on time after you overslept? Because <laughs> I feel like it's like one of the greatest stories in, in uh, airport history. Yeah, you know, it's, it's definitely a record on my book. And by the grace of God, I made a flight. I My flight was at 7.15 a.m. I was flying out of San Jose. I missed my alarm, overslept. I woke up at 6.30 and still managed to make my 7.15 flight. I had, don't worry everybody, I brushed my teeth and got dressed <laughs> and everything, but I, I was quick. It took me about 20 minutes to do all that. And then I got in the Uber. I got to the airport at about 6.50, 6.55-ish. And from that point on, like, I just sped through the security line. There was nobody in the security line. And then my, I kid you not, I didn't tell you this either, Gilbert. My uh, gate was the second to last gate at the airport. There are 35 gates at the airport. My <laughs> gate was 34. I ran. I was like OJ Simpson in a Hertz commercial back in the day or Enterprise, whatever it was. I was running through the airport, all drenched, sweaty, made my 715 flight. I, I would advise nobody ever to do that. Trust me, you would probably miss your flight. If that happened to me a hundred more times, I will probably miss my flight at least 99 <laughs> of those times. So it was by the grace of God, I made my flight. I'm back home. Uh, but next time um, I'm flying and traveling, I'm going to make sure I set up a couple of alarms. Well, the, the best thing, Tyler, that you told me is that you didn't even get a middle seat and you got the early bird on Southway. So that means you go in earlier on the plane. So you have to, and then you were you were last or second and last. And all I could picture you, man, you're like Debo Samuel out there in the open space, <laughs> breaking yeah. tackles through the oh, airport. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was running uh, by people, maneuvering by people. I, a mix between Debo Samuel and uh, Barry Sanders a little bit, I like to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, if you made it on time. I, I definitely believe it. And, you, you know, you used to play, I want to say, or, or football at uh, UCLA or was it track or both? Yeah, like, track and field. But I was, a full, I was a fullback at Howard uh, University. So, you know, I do have a little bit of football experience. See, I shouldn't be surprised at all, Tyler. But... Uh, <laughs> Thank you for being on, on the podcast. I know you and I are both tired from uh, you know that Monday night football game. It kind of just sets everything back throughout the week. Uh, but we have you here for uh, for Cowboys talk because you used to cover them, and also you're a national reporter for USA Today. Uh, I love uh, your, your whole coverage of the league. And I'm guessing that's also a grind. I, I maybe another story for a different day. Uh, but Tyler, before we get to the Cowboys. I just want to get your thoughts because you were there uh, to watch the Rams and you've been there before multiple times this, this season and even last season. What the heck is going on with this offense, Matthew Stafford and uh, the one man show with uh, Cooper Cup? So, you know, I was at the Super Bowl when the Rams beat the Bengals. And even though they won that game, there were a few things that concerned me that have really carried over to this season. Uh, on offense, one, it was the, the over-reliance on Cooper Cup. Um, and then on defense, it was Aaron Donald or Buss. Um, Jalen Ramsey obviously got beat a lot in that Super Bowl game, and that has carried over, trick trickled into this season, especially that first game. And then, you know, without Aaron Donald, the Bengals are Super Bowl champions. And really, those same issues – kind of carried over until that uh, 49ers game and they reared their ugly head because Cooper Cup target 19 times against the 49ers, uh, 14 receptions. No other receiver had more than two catches. And really on defense, when Aaron Donald isn't wreaking havoc and being the best player on the field, there aren't really – any more playmakers to go with that. It's like Aaron Donald has to be a hero or this Rams defense looks average at best. And, you know, I don't want to single out Jalen Ramsey again, but on that long Debo Samuel catch and run, 
he was right there in position to tackle him and really had a, a terrible effort, horrible tackling for him and trying to tackle him. And, you know, he's good in coverage, but he's taken a step back as far as possibly being the best corner in the NFL. I still do think he's a top five corner, but he's taken a step back. And then their front seven, if Aaron Donald is a rushing passer, who's rushing? I mean, Leonard Floyd, I've talked to him in the locker room. He's not having the season that he's had before. None of the other front seven players are playing good rushing and passer. Bobby Wagner, he's still a tackling machine, but I don't think to this point of the season he's had the overall impact of he that he would have hoped or the Rams would have hoped. And this team is really, you know, it's I won't call it a Super Bowl hangover, but you know, it's a sluggish start uh, by their standards, two and two record. Um, you know, I'm not really impressed about, you know, how they have won some of their games. The, we, we were both at the Cardinals game as well. They didn't look like world beaters <laughs> beating the Cardinals. And, you know, this past uh, Monday night, I mean, it, it was really an, a bad effort on both sides of the ball. You know, having a goose egg in the red zone, they were terrible in that area. <laughs> they were terrible tackling. It, it was just, you know, a litany of, you know, issues that I saw from the Los Angeles Rams in that Monday night loss. Yeah, Tyler, a lot of great points. And especially because uh, a lot of points that Victor has made on the podcast that they're, they're very top heavy. You need, you need, you need stars to make plays. And when they don't, it's a lot of bad things, but mm-hmm. Tyler, you know, you know, it's really bad when you just touched on maybe 20 issues right now, Tyler. <laughs> and one of them was not the offensive line. The offensive yeah. line is very bad. They're depleted, a bunch of injuries. So, and that way I would transition to the Cowboys now. They went from Nick Bosa and all the guys of 49ers to not having to face Michael Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence, and this Cowboys defense. How has this Cowboys defense looked to you so far to start the year? The Cowboys have one of the best defenses in all of football, and that pass rush might be the best in the NFL. They lead the league in uh, pressures entering week five. They have 15 sacks, which uh, is second in the NFL. Michael Parsons is going to be in the running for a defensive a player of the year. Demarcus Lawrence is having a really good season as well. We all know about uh, Diggs and the uh, defensive backfield. So, you know, this Cowboys team, I know Cooper Rush gets a lot, a lot of praise, but this defense is really why they have uh, been winning games. Cooper Rush hasn't been making any mistakes, hasn't turned over the football, but they're really winning games because of their defense, primarily uh, their front seven and their pass rush. Uh, Tyler, I wanted to ask you, talking about the defense, how, how is Dan Quinn using Micah Parsons? Is he using them differently with some of the linebackers they brought in? Uh, yeah, he's moving him all over the field. He's playing at, on the edge at defensive end. He's playing uh, some at middle linebacker. He's playing some at weak side uh, linebacker. And sometimes they're even you know, doing some stunts where he's uh, rushing uh, in, in the middle. Uh, at, in the A gap or the B gap. So, you know, they're really, you know, utilizing his versatility. And, uh, you know, he, they're doing the right job of doing that because he is turning into arguably the best pass rusher in football. And how has his, uh, how has uh, Dan Quinn's defense changed from what he used to coach when he was at Seattle that covered three to what he's implemented here with the Cowboys? Mm hmm. Well, you know, he still utilizes a cover three defense. That's a really good question. But at this point, uh, you know, with the Cowboys personnel, it's a lot different than what they had in Seattle. The, you know, the uh, Seattle had the Legion of Boom. The Cowboys, their secondary is nowhere near the Legion of Boom. But their front seven, you know, they have a really good uh, front seven, primarily because of the playmaking ability of Demarcus Lawrence and uh, Micah Parsons. So, you know, I really like, they do run that still, that cover three defense. They have a ball hawking uh, cornerback and digs, but it, they really rely on their pressure up front because they have players that can really get after the quarterback and make them under duress. I got one more uh, defensive uh, uh, question for you, and it has to do with Trayvon Diggs. It, I, I saw Torrey Smith uh, tweeted out that he's a top three uh, DB right now. Is he for you, and who would be your top three, uh, and what have you seen from him that's different? Because he's he already has 16 career interceptions, two back, one, uh, back-to-back, one back 
one in each game back to back the last two games? Well, wow, that's a good question. I wouldn't say he's top three because although he makes really big plays and, you know, he's a ball hawking uh, cornerback, he does give up some plays too. He's kind of a boom or bust cornerback. Uh, you know, when I look across the league, you know, I even though I talked about Ramsey, I still like him. I like, you know, J.C. Jackson uh, from the uh, Chargers. I like Alexander from, you know, Packers. Um, so th there are a lot of uh, cornerbacks who I would probably give the edge over Diggs, but Diggs is in the conversation definitely as a top five uh, cornerback right now. Yeah, just for reference, he said that his top three were Patrick Sertain, Darius Slay, and then Trayvon Diggs. So, mm. uh, I'm... Okay, yeah. Uh, I would probably have Darius Slay around top eight-ish. Uh, Sertain, Patrick Sertain is definitely – up there there are a lot of good cornerbacks in this league but you know the thing is with the league today it's a pass happy league so every cornerback gets beat <laughs> every single one there the days of Deion sanders are are not there the days of revis island aren't there i mean nobody is on that level nobody's on Deion's level and when revis was in his heyday nobody is still on revis's level either yeah, Tyler, it's a different game. It's very pass heavy. And like you mentioned, Jalen Ramsey's been caught multiple times this year, but you got to make that tackle, right? Open space. Oh, yeah, you got to make that <laughs> tackle. <laughs> it's deep, it's tough, man. Uh, but going back to the offense and, and Cooper Rush, and, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a nice, not not for the Cowboys, but for us who like entertainment and drama, it's a it's a quarterback controversy that's brewing. Dak Prescott's trying to, trying to come back. I don't think he might be ready for this Rams game. But what are you feeling on this in this quarterback battle or controversy that we're heading towards, uh, Tyler? Should it be Cooper Rush team? Should it go back to Dak Prescott? Like you mentioned, maybe Cooper's uh, just doing his job and being efficient and managing the game, and you're in a different level when you get Dak Prescott on the field. How do you feel about this quarterback controversy, or who should be the guy uh, to start for the Cowboys? Well, I'm going to play in his last name. Dak Prescott should not rush back. <laughs> now, I, I, I will say this. Now, Cooper Rush, he's the first player in NFL history to win his first four starts and have a 90-plus quarterback uh, passer rating in those starts as well. And he's managed the game well, but I really like how the Cowboys, they really haven't changed their offense with him at quarterback. He they're running pretty much the same type of plays. And I'm really impressed with his ability to extend plays with his legs. He's not, you know, the scrambling type of quarterback, but he gets, you know, outside of the pocket and makes plays. He did, he did that against uh, the commanders in last week's win. But, you know, when I look at both the quarterbacks, Dak Prescott is still a better quarterback. There is no quarterback controversy. Dak Prescott, he's more athletic. He, gives you a wide range of different options uh, as, as a quarterback. He's, uh, you know, can, can get out of the pocket, even though I said Cooper Rush can too, but a little bit better. And he has just his experience level. That can't be taught. And Dak Prescott has experience. But Cooper Rush has given the Cowboys the ability to keep Dak Prescott on the shelf until he's 100% healthy because nobody had – the Cowboys going 3-0 and <laughs> with Cooper Rush at quarterback. And that's a luxury. Now you don't have to rush Dak Prescott back. You can keep him on ice until that, you know, thumb injury is 100% healed and then trot him out there. Because when I look at this, the Cowboys, I don't have them. You're probably going to ask me, but I don't have them beating the Rams this week. <laughs> then, they, then they play the Eagles in Philadelphia the next week. That I would not trot Dak Prescott out there. <laughs> from a, a serious injury against the Philadelphia Eagles, who will probably be undefeated because they play the Cardinals this coming week. And then maybe that Lions game. It's, that, it's a home game in Dallas. So I, I kind of like Dak Prescott coming back then uh, from his injury. Tyler, you're so efficient, man. Like the, the way you moved in the airport, you're answering all the questions, gave us a prediction <laughs> already. I don't need to ask you about a prediction. <laughs> But last question, because I told you 15 minutes. I know you're tired uh, from, from that flight and, and uh, rushing people at the airport. Uh, but the one I'm, I'm curious about is C.D. Lamb. And you mentioned Jalen Ramsey. So that would be a good little matchup there for those guys. And I feel like C.D. has, you know, set up his game uh, ever since Cooper Rush got onto the field. I don't know if it's like a like a coincidence or what happened with C.D., but he's really kind of raised that, that game. Uh, he had that one bad drop on Monday Night Football, but, but made up for it with a great catch after that. 
Uh, and also another, you know, good, you know, wide receiver matchup. I know you're talking about rankings on the cornerbacks, but, you know, Cooper Cup is on a different level. But CD Lamb, I feel like he's getting closer to being an elite wide receiver. How do you feel about him so far? Yeah, you know, I really like what I've seen from C.D. Lamb this season. But really, the, the Cowboys, they, their receiving core, like Michael Gallup has uh, played well. So, I, you know, when I look at the Cowboys, it's their offensive line. If their offensive line can, you know, be efficient and protect Cooper Rush, and if, you know, they can get their running game going, Tony Pollard has looked really good. He's a lot more spry than Ezekiel Elliott. So they really set up the run game and then, well, their run game kind of sets up the pass, but that CD lamb, when they played against the New York giants, that was kind of his coming out party, especially that one particular drive where he capped it off uh, with a touchdown. So I like what I see from him and that's going to be a really good matchup uh, versus Jalen Ramsey. But again, you got to worry about the other players too. Uh, Michael Gallup, they have, you know, Noah Brown has played, uh, well, this season, I know I believe he's questionable uh, for uh, this week's game, but the Cowboys, they have a pretty good receiving corps. Tyler, thank you for the time and that great insight. And again, I really appreciate the time because you've been on Combos on the Beat, now here at House of Horns. Uh, you're one of my favorite guests to have on, but I want to return the favor and plug your podcast. Let us know where we could you know, hear that. Well, I appreciate that. You know, if you ever want me on House of Horns again, I'll always uh, be uh, free to come on your show. But yeah, you can uh, listen to my podcast. It's, it's a football podcast. You can download it wherever you download, uh, you know, your podcast. And you know, you can check it out on usatoday.com as well. Tyler, again, thank you for the time and great last name. Tyler the Dragon was moving <laughs> through the, the airport in San Jose. Uh, leaving people in the dust. Thank you for the time. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'll talk to you too soon.